Hi. By now, you have seen various techniques to solve differential equations. Nevertheless, there are still differential equations to which these methods cannot be applied. If you ever encounter a differential equation that you can't solve, you can always try to approximate the solution with Taylor polynomials. As an example, I will give an approximation of a solution of the ARI equation. The solutions to the ARI equation are called ARI functions, and they were introduced in the 19th century by the British scientist George Airy, when he tried to understand how rainbows are formed. Let's take a look at the Airy differential equation with the initial values that you see on the screen. The Airy equation is a second order linear equation and it is also homogeneous. However, this equation doesn't have constant coefficients and there is a term x times y in the equation. This means that you can't solve it using the techniques that you have been working with so far. Let's say f of x is the solution of this initial value problem. We are going to construct an approximation of the function f of x using a Taylor polynomial of degree 1. Since the initial values give us some information about the behavior of the solution in the point x is 1, we'll look for a Taylor polynomial centered at 1. You can see the general form of such a polynomial on the screen. The initial values that were given tell us that the solution that we are looking for must have the value 2 in x is 1, and its der derivative must be minus 1 in x is 1. This means that if we simply replace f of 1 and f prime of 1, respectively by 2 and minus 1, we get a Taylor approximation of f of x of degree 1. We didn't even have to use the differential equation itself. The orange graph that you see here is the actual solution of the initial value problem that we started with. The blue line is the Taylor polynomial of degree 1 that we found to approximate this solution. You can see that near x is 1, this line indeed gives you a good approximation. But if x increases, the difference between the approximation and the actual solution becomes larger and larger. A second degree Taylor polynomial may give, may give us a better approximation. We have already established that f of 1 is 2 and f prime of 1 is minus 1. But what is the second derivative of f of x in the point x is 1? To find this value, we will need the differential equation. This equation tells us that the second derivative of f of x is equal to x times f of x. So the second derivative in x is 1 is equal to 1 times 2. If you plug all these values into the general formula for the second degree Taylor polynomial, then we get the Taylor approximation that you see at the bottom of the screen. The blue line that you see here is the graph of the Taylor polynomial we just constructed. It is already a better approximation of the orange graph than the Taylor polynomial of degree 1. The higher the degree of the Taylor polynomial, the better the approximation. Now at first sight, you might think that it is not possible to construct a Taylor approximation of degree 3. The differential equation only gives us information about the second derivative of f of x. However, there is a way to compute the third derivative. Now how can we do that? We can simply take the derivative of both sides of the equation. If we do this, then we find that the third derivative of f of x must be equal to f of x plus x times f prime of x. You can find the right hand side of the equation by using the product rule for derivative. This equality then allows us to compute the third derivative of f of x in x is 1 and to construct the third de degree Taylor polynomial that approximates the solution of the original differential equation. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in class.